In the Bible, in Isaiah chapter 58, verse 13, God speaks of my holy day. Muslims today keep Friday as their holy day. Jews and a growing number of Christians go to church on Saturday. And then there's the majority of Christians that keep Sunday. Which day is the right day? That's our topic. Stay tuned. Welcome to part 12 of a 13-part series called Good News for Muslims, discussing Christian Muslim issues. And we're right down near the end. We've only got one more program after this, so uh, thank you for being with us today. Uh, our topic today is called God's Holy Day. What day is really God's Holy Day? Uh, my guest again is Shabazz. Shabazz, you're still here with me. <laughs> thank you. Uh, we've got one more program to go, 11 behind us. And this is a big one. So we're going to talk about, uh, about which day is God's day. And in, a, in our last program, we went down through Exodus chapter 20, and we talked about the Ten Commandments. And as we discussed, uh, there's a, a general respect for Moses in the Muslim community. Isn't that right? That's correct. They believe that in at least the first five books uh, are considered to be pure. That's right. And as we looked at Exodus 20, which is the second book of Moses, we went down through the Ten Commandments one by one, and we didn't spend a lot of time on the fourth commandment, but let's, uh, let's zero in on this one. And why don't you open your Bible? Sure. And why don't you read this? And I'll just follow along here. Okay. Exodus chapter 20, verses 8 to 11, which is commandment number four. Okay, I'm reading. Remember the Sabbath day to keep it holy. Six days shalt thou labor and do all thy work. But the seventh day is the Sabbath of the Lord thy God. In it thou shalt not do any work, thou nor thy son, nor thy daughter, thy manservant, nor thy maidservant, nor thy cattle, nor the, thy stranger that is within thy gates. For in six days the Lord made heaven and earth and sea and all that in them is, and rested the seventh day, wherefore the Lord blessed the Sabbath day and hallowed it. Okay, so that's commandment number four. It's the only commandment <clears throat> of all ten that starts out with the word remember. That's correct. Right. Uh, you know, eight, eight of them say, you shall, thou shalt not, this or that, you shall not kill, you shall not commit adultery, you shall not bear false witness. Uh, one of them, the fifth one, says, honor your father and your mother. But the fourth one alone says, remember. And when you think of remember, what comes to mind? <laughs> well, don't forget. Yeah, don't yeah. forget. Yeah, don't forget. Yeah, if my wife told me to uh, go to the market and don't, you know, don't forget or remember <laughs> to get a loaf of bread, if I came back um, with a pizza or, yes. you know, some other things, but I forgot that loaf of bread, I'd be in trouble. Remember, remember the Sabbath day to keep it holy. So here God talks about uh, not forgetting his, his day that we should keep holy. Now, as uh, I think everybody knows, in Islam, the holy day for Muslims is Friday. Now, uh, enlighten us and tell us where did that come from? Why is that the case? Well, Juma in Arabic or Jume in Persian, that's the Persian pronunciation of it is the day that Muslims venerate as their day of uh, prayer, coming together. Joma means to come together. Jo Joma? Yeah, Juma in Juma. Arabic. Word, yeah, it means to come together. Mm, okay. And um, so it's a day that Muslims, wherever they are, they come to their mosques and they pray. 
And, uh, and uh, before, of course, when Muhammad began his uh, uh, ministry uh, in the beginning, that was not part of their uh, belief systems. But eventually, as he began to get these revelations, uh, that was also added. And um, he also wanted to uh, contribute something to his religion because here, the, as far as he was concerned, Christians kept Sunday. And uh, the Jews, they all kept Saturday as a day of, uh, that was holy to them and rest. So he decided that Friday would be the day for the Muhammad and his followers. And, um, and there are other reasons that are given uh, based on the hadith and that Allah told, uh, for instance, told Muhammad. I'm going to read one of these hadith right now. It's, this is a hadith uh, from the narration of Abu Huriara. And, um, and he's um, quoting, supposedly he's quoting the Prophet Muhammad. And it reads, The best day that the sun has risen upon is Friday. On it Adam was created. On it uh, he entered paradise. And on it he was expelled from it. And the hour will not be established except on Friday. So uh, the Hadith and, and the Quran, they exalt that day as a day that is the best day of the week and that uh, all Muslims are to basically keep those that day and uh, as a day of coming together for prayer. You mentioned it's in the Quran. Yes. Uh, I think there is there only one place in the Quran? No, there are, uh, there are uh, more than one, uh, but there's this, the major one is, uh, is uh, found in uh, Surah 62. 62.9. Nine. Okay, I've got that. And uh, let me read that. O oh, you who believe, when the call is made for prayer on Friday, then hasten to the remembrance of Allah and leave off trading. That is better for you if you know. That's right. And uh, in fact, uh, that is the only verse in the Quran that talks that is, about it's the only one. Friday. Yeah. Um, this is their uh, purpose and reason, and they believe this is the day that uh, all mankind should be honoring okay so this was a, a revelation to or an apparent partly revelation. A, a, partly a, this particular verse was a revelation from gabriel and given to muhammad uh, as according to the islamic tradition and plus the hadith that supports of course the hadith were not written until after the death of the prophet okay now, now you mentioned that in the hadith you read that a little bit ago that that it talks about uh, friday being the day that adam was created. Yes. Okay. Um, let's let's take a look at that because he was created and he entered into paradise on that day. And and that's I mean that is true according to the Bible. Uh, we started with Exodus, the fourth commandment about the the Sabbath, and it says in six days the Lord made heaven and earth, the sea and all that is in them, and he rested on the seventh day. And that points us back to Genesis uh, chapter one and chapter two. And as the Hadith says, uh, Adam was made on the sixth day. And that's, that agrees with the mm -hmm. Bible. Uh, it says in Genesis chapter 1, verse 26, And God said, Let us make man in our image after our likeness. And as you keep reading a little bit farther down in verse 31, it says the evening and the morning were the sixth day. So we do have evidence in Moses that... Uh, Adam was made on the sixth day. But then it goes on in chapter 2, and why don't you read verses 1, 2, and 3. Yeah. Thus the heavens and the earth were finished, and all the host of them. And on the seventh day God ended his work, which he had made, and he rested on the seventh day from all his work which he had made. And God blessed the seventh day and sanctified it, because that in it, he had rested from all his work, which God created and made. Okay, let, let's just make a few points on this. Um, uh, the Hadith is right that God did make Adam on the sixth day, but then it goes on in the Bible, in Moses' writings, that the seventh day was a day that God rested. Now, a lot of people think that the Sabbath or the seventh day was, uh, is, is really a Jewish day. Yeah. I think that's a pretty common view. Correct. But in Genesis, uh, there were no Jews at this point, no. at least in Genesis 1 and Genesis 2. Adam was not Jewish. 
God didn't make a Jew, he made a man. And then he took Eve from Adam and made, made Eve. So here we have, uh, you know, God resting on the seventh day. And, you know, to me, it's a, it, there's, a there's a disconnect when, as you've told me, uh, in Islam, there's a high regard for the writings of Moses, that Moses' writings are considered to be pure. And, you know, referring to Moses' writings, whereas, you know, describing that Adam was made on the sixth day, but then in Moses' writings, it continues on and says that, that God uh, ended his work and that he rested and he blessed the seventh day and he sanctified it. And the word sanctified means that he set it apart for man. Uh, and again, it wasn't a Jewish day. And so, you know, we have the Islamic belief that Moses' writings are pure, and yet in these writings, we have the seventh day being the day that God set apart for humanity. And he did that before there was ever sin on earth. And that and act No Jews of, and yeah, no sin. No Jews and no sin, and uh, nobody except Adam and, he, and later on Eve, when God made Eve from his rib. And, but this was an act that God was basically blessing this day as a remembrance of creation and as a day that man needed to keep to have rest one day. And in fact, uh, when we're talking about rest, the Muslim communities believe that, uh, that Christians and Jews are in error when they say God needed to rest. They say God doesn't get tired. Why would he need to rest? In fact, there is a verse in the Quran, if you don't mind, I'll read that really sure. quickly. This is um, uh, from um, uh, Quran, Surah 50, verse 38. It reads, And we did certainly create the heavens and the earth and what is between them in six days, and there touched us no weariness. Allah is speaking here in the formal we and us, but He's speaking alone. But He's saying that, I didn't get tired when I created the world. Basically, this is a, 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 a this is to, if you or stand against that text in the Bible in, in Genesis chapter 2 where it says God rested. But what they misunderstand is that God didn't need to rest. He did that to be an example to humanity that we need to rest. God made us, we're not perfect mm -hmm. like Him in, a, in the sense that He is, so he made a day of rest for Adam and Eve, even in perfection. They had to have a day of rest. Six days they were to work, one day they had to have rest. And um, so they, they pick on this, uh, and, uh, but they don't come to the conclusion and understand that the Bible is not saying that God was weary or tired. Right, and there's another verse in Isaiah that says, He fainteth not, nor he's not weary. And so, That's right. and, and it doesn't really say in Genesis chapter 2, that he was tired and that's oh. why he rested. Uh, it, it says that he did, he did rest on the, he, and he blessed the seventh day and he sanctified it, meaning that he set it apart for man. That's right. So you're saying that he, he did that, uh, not because he was worn out, but because he was establishing a day for humanity. That's right. It's like, it's like a gardener who plants a beautiful garden. He's not weary or tired and he has worked and then he sits on a couch and just looks at his, the work of his hand. Mm -hmm. Basically, God rested from working. He paused from his work of creation. He paused, and that pause okay. in, the, in, in the Hebrew is uh, it's referred to as rest, but it doesn't mean that he was tired. Mm -hmm. In, in uh, Mark chapter 2, verse 27, Jesus said, the Sabbath was made for man. So there, that shows that the reason why God rested was because yeah. he was setting that day apart for man. That's correct. He, he rested. He made that day for man. Um, so I guess, you know, the, the question would be, well, why would he change it later on? Why would he change it either, you know, a lot of Christians believe he changed it to Sunday in honor of the resurrection. Although if you really look at Matthew, Mark, Luke, and John, uh, and beyond that, the writings of Paul, there really is no evidence in the New Testament that the resurrection of Jesus on Sunday, which was also called the first day of the week, that that changed the day. Uh, in fact, 
if you really look close at Matthew, Mark, Luke, and John, there's no uh, statement of Jesus at all, even one time, mm. where the words, the first day of the week, came out of his mouth. That's correct. He said nothing about the first day of the week. He taught nothing about the first day of the week. And in Matthew 28, verse 19 and 20, he told his disciples to go into all the world and to uh, preach the gospel, the good news, and then to, to teach all things whatsoever I have commanded you. And then he said, lo, I'm with you always, even to the end of the world. Mm -hmm. And, and uh, to me, that's a very, very compelling argument that Jesus gave his disciples authority to teach only what he taught. Mm -hmm. And he didn't teach anything about Sunday. Yes, he did rise on Sunday, which was the first day of the week. And then he went back to his uh, work of ministry, but he didn't uh, teach anything about it. So why would, why would God change that day uh, way down the line from creation? Uh, it just, you know, it really doesn't make sense. If you go back to the original creation, it was an original day that he blessed and sanctified and, and yes. set apart for holy use. In fact, uh, in, in the Christian world, they have no premise for keeping a different day than what God in the Bible has already told us we should keep, which is the seventh day of the week, Saturday. We can say that the Muslims at least have some premise because they have a book and in their book they're instructed to do this. But if you want to look at the continuity of Scripture and of, that, of the sacred text, that if God is the author of this book, then, and he says in, in Psalms, he says, I am the Lord, I change not. Mm -hmm. God doesn't make mistakes. He doesn't uh, make a decision now and then an hour later say, oh, you know what? I made a mistake. I shouldn't have made that decision. I, I really messed up. God doesn't do that. He doesn't change his mind. Mm -hmm. When he established the Sabbath, it remains the same. In New Testament, Christ kept the Sabbath. The apostles kept the Sabbath. Paul in uh, Acts chapter 13 keeps the Sabbath with the with, even with the, uh, the, uh, the Greeks, the non-Jews, the Gentiles, and, um, and, that, and even John in the last book of the Bible says that he was in the Spirit on the Lord's Day, which Jesus in Mark chapter 2 says that I am the Lord of the Sabbath. And we see that continuity throughout the Scripture. And then when we come in the seventh century, when we come to Muhammad, suddenly a different revelation is given. And that continuity is broken at least for the Muslims, and, um, which, which is, is pretty sad because, because there's a true blessing in keeping the Sabbath of God. Now, now in, in Islam, you've told me that there's five major prophets, right? There are yeah. other prophets, but the major ones are Adam, right? And then Abraham, and then Moses, and then Jesus, and then Muhammad. That's correct. And we know that, um, you know, Adam was made on the sixth day, God rested on the seventh day, so Adam would be a Sabbath keeper because he made that day in the beginning for man. Uh, Abraham, there's really not much information about what day he, he kept. And then when you get to Moses, uh, it's very clear in Moses' writings uh, in Genesis and in the Ten Commandments, remember the seventh day, keep that day holy. When you look at Jesus, uh, clearly in Matthew, Mark, Luke, and John, Jesus was a Sabbath keeper. He went into the synagogue on the Sabbath in Luke uh, 4.16. He taught about the Sabbath. He said, pray that your flight be not in winter or on the Sabbath in Mark or Matthew 24, 20. He said the Sabbath was made for man in Mark 2, 27. And then when you get to Muhammad uh, and you know, a revelation to, to keep Friday, this would be you know, out of sync with the first four yes. apparent uh, you know, major prophets in, in Islam. Yeah. And we have, you know, again, it's kind of a, a disconnect, like why would God do that? Why would he establish one day at the beginning? Why did he reemphasize it through Moses? Why did Jesus keep it? And then yet he would then give instruction to Muhammad to change it. Why invest all of that time and energy in teaching something for centuries, thousands of years, to only change it in the seventh century? AD and uh, replace it with another day. Uh, that's an argument that, that goes not just to the Muslims, but even to Sunday-keeping Christians. That's right. Uh, and it, it, here's another verse in Exodus 31, verse 18, 
that describes when God gave the Ten Commandments. 31.18 says, He gave to Moses when he had made an end of communing with him upon Mount Sinai two tables of testimony, tables of stone written with the finger of God. Mm. And there's two things that make the Ten Commandments unique of all other laws. Uh, one is they were written with the finger of God mm. and they were written on stone, a solid rock. And when you think of God's finger on rock, I mean, the, the, uh, the message is that this is an unchangeable commandment that's on solid stone. It's like there's a phrase where people say, uh, we can change this or that because it's not written in stone. Yes. And that goes back to Moses and back to God, back to the Ten Commandments. So, uh, so now we, we live in a time where the majority of Muslims keep uh, Friday, the majority of Christians keep Sunday, and, and a lot of the opposition to Saturday is really because of opposition against Jews. But when you peel away, you know, the layers and look at the real Bible Sabbath, it's not a Jewish day no, it's at all. Uh, it's, a, it's God's day. He calls it my holy day in uh, Isaiah 58, verse 13. And he specifies that's the Sabbath day. Yeah, Moses didn't come up with that on his own. Uh, Aaron didn't come up with that on his own. God gave him the Sabbath. It was a special gift God gave to Adam. And it just went hand in hand until Moses. When Moses, when Moses took the responsibility of being the prophet and leading Israel uh, from Egypt, he inherited what was already revealed in the Bible, in the Word of God to Adam and uh, to other men before him, the patriarchs like Abraham. Right. And now, you, you shared with us uh, a few, few programs ago your story, your journey, my journey to peace. And there's a lot that I know about your background. Uh, I don't know that much, but I know some more than what you've shared here. And you've told me that you did have a, a was it a dream or a vision specifically about the Sabbath? Tell us a little, a little more about that background. Yeah. I was at the time I was actually attending a Sunday church and I didn't know anything about the Sabbath. And there was a man, a, a, a literature evangelist that sold books that visited this particular church one Sunday. And at that time, I was seeking to find out what is truth. Uh, I had just how, become a Christian. Yeah, so that was how long after you that met that man? That was maybe about who... uh, six months after I had met that man on the road in a Main Street in Walnut Creek, that young man who led me to Christ. About six months later, I'm sitting in this Sunday church because for a few months I've been going there. and uh, But I was not really learning much and I was seeking for truth. And, and at one point I asked the Lord, I said, where am I supposed to go? I just came out of Islam and it's all these Christian churches. I don't know where I'm supposed yeah, it's to confusing. go. It's confusing. It's confusing. It's very confusing and to people looking for yeah, uh, which it, is the right religion. It was confusing for me, extremely. And then at that moment, uh, this man came a uh, uh, couple of weeks later and he got my name and all that. He came to my home and we, he told me about the Sabbath and he was a Seventh-day Adventist. And uh, I said, the Sabbath, what do you mean? And he said, and I said, wait a minute. I used to keep Friday and then and, and I'm, now I'm keeping Sunday and you're telling me I'm supposed to keep another day? But what he said made sense. Like so a I ping began, pong ball. Yeah, like a ping pong ball. Friday, and I began Friday, to pray about Saturday. it. Sunday. <laughs> yeah, it was just amazing. And, and, I, and I prayed about it. I said, Lord, you, if this man is from you, you make it clear because I'm brand new. I don't even know. And then mm -hmm. at that point, there was an evangelist that came to town. We Bible studied and all that. And, and I went to the Lord for a final time. I said, Lord, and I said, I prayed in my heart, Satan cannot read our minds, only God can read our minds. And I always pray in my heart, I don't pray out loud. And I prayed in my heart, I said, I said Father, show me. If, if Saturday is your day, please make it clear. Give me a dream. Show me my dream because I'm really confused at this point and mm -hmm. I don't know what I'm supposed to do. And he gave me a dream that night. And in my dream, it was a Sabbath. And it was brighter than any other day, uh, day of the week. You know how in the Quran says that the sun rises brighter on, on Friday? Well, in my dream, it was Saturday and it was bright, brighter than any other day of wow. the week. And I was led into this church. And, uh, and um, in this church, it was a Seventh-day Adventist church. And there I was shown the Bible. And I was shown uh, uh, the writings of God in the Bible and all that. And, I, and, and it was revealed to me 
in a very, very, very clear way. Everything that's truth was in an instant given to me. When I woke up, the only thing I, I didn't remember was that. Everything else I remember about the dream. And God revealed to me in my dream that the seventh day Sabbath is His Sabbath and that, that um, it is a day that He has made for man, not for Himself, but He made it for us and that we are supposed to keep it. And when I woke up, I rejoiced because I promised the Lord that if you show me, I will forever serve you. <laughs> and He showed me, just like really quickly, just like this young man that I told you that I baptized, that he had a problem with about keeping coming to church. When he had that dream, in his dream, Jesus told him, He said that you need to go to church. The Sabbath is the most important day of the week. You need to be in church. And uh, that was a, a, a wonderful, mighty experience. So you keep the Sabbath today? Yes, I do. Not, not because you're Jewish, which you're not. No, I'm not. And uh, you believe in Jesus, but you don't keep Sunday as a holy day because no. you don't see that in, in the New Testament. Nowhere. And you no longer did you used to go to the mosque on, on Friday. You did. You used to, you used to do that. Yes, m my parents. And now you keep the seventh day Sabbath, yes. and you're you know you're really um, you've you've lined up, <clears throat> you've lined up with what the fourth commandment really says. And again, I think we should stress that, as you've mentioned uh, in in Islam, there is a high regard uh, for the writings of Moses. Yes. And that they are considered to be pure. And when we read the writings of Moses and look at Exodus chapter 20, we have commandment number four, where God said, remember the Sabbath day to keep it, it holy. Six days you shall labor and do all your work. But the seventh day is the Sabbath of the Lord. It's not the Sabbath of the Jews, it's the Sabbath of the Lord, your God. In it you shall not do any work. You or your son or your daughter or your manservant, nor your maidservant, nor your cattle, nor your stranger that is within your gates. For in six days the Lord made heaven and earth, the sea and all that in them is. Everything we see around us, God made in six days. And then he rested, not because he was tired, but he was setting this day apart for man. He rested on the seventh day, wherefore the Lord blessed the Sabbath day and he hallowed it. Uh, my birthday is April 5, I was born in 1959. Every year it's April 5 because you can't change it. Uh, the Sabbath is the birthday of the world. It's still there, it can't be changed, and God tells us, don't forget it. We hope you enjoyed watching Good News for Muslims with Steve Wolberg and Shabazz. This entire 13-part series is now available on DVD. To order from within the U.S., call Whitehorse Media at 1-800-782-4253. To watch the series online or for more information, visit the website www.goodnewsformuslims.com.